Hello. We're going to talk about pike. Pike are predators and they're scavengers too. And they're very well equipped indeed for both jobs. They'll eat practically anything, dead or alive, that will give them some nutriment. They'll eat other fish, they'll eat waterfowl, they'll eat anything they find dead lying on the bottom or floating on the top. They'll eat swimming rats, both water rats and land rats. In fact, there's practically nothing they won't eat. Normally, they try and ambush their prey. But as they get older and bigger, they're more inclined to go for bigger prey, and if they can, disabled prey or even dead fish. Now, here you can see what I've been talking about. This is the head of a stuffed pike caught in Ireland that weighed 43 pounds. And look at its teeth. In the lower jaw, fangs like a dog, and very sharp indeed. Never put your hand in a pike's mouth. You see the teeth? And in the roof of the mouth, can you see that? You've got a multitude of teeth, hundreds of them, pointing down the pike's throat. So once those jaws have closed on anything, it has a very, very poor chance of ever getting free. Occasionally a fish does get free. We sometimes catch a fish that shows scars from having been bitten by a pike, but uh, not very often, I'm afraid. Not many fish, once they're clamped in those jaws, can escape. That is really a formidable argument. The point I want to make about it, apart from how good it is at catching things, is that it's not very easy for an angler to find a place for a hook to penetrate these bony jaws and this multitude of teeth. And this is why, almost alone amongst the fish that we anglers try to catch, possibly apart from the salmon, we do use, most of the time, multiple hooks instead of single ones. Now we're going to see some pike actually being caught. Well, there we are. We're we're just coming to the end of Rockland Dyke now, and when we get round the, the bend, the full force of this nor'easter is going to hit us. It's quite a windy, cold day, but really, I suppose for February, it's not too bad. It's a very bleak, typical Broadland look about it. All the Phragmites along the the edge, the common Norfolk reed, they're all brown, pale brown. In the next couple of months, they're going to rot away to leaf mould. Very tall reeds along this part of the, the dike. Used to be good fishing right in the, the neck here, but these days we go to a, a spot right over the, on the other side of the broad. Oh, I'm feeling the wind around my neck now. Still, this is what winter piking's all about. I love this broad. Now I'm going to head up into the boat channel towards the pike spot. So far, it looks very hiking morning. Goodness me, there's thousands of gulls over there. A lot of different birds on this, this bro. Oh, well, good, we're on the ledge. Now, the front anchor is in about three feet of water. I'll reposition this on the knot.
couple of non-descriptive knots. Again, I'm, I like to be very quiet in my movements. And this clonking about on the floorboards doesn't do it any good at all. Now, I'm in due lee now. That's beautiful. Put this one down. Now, this one will probably be that much deeper. No, I'm still just on the edge of the ledge. Good. Now, just out in front here, about another two or three yards, it goes down to ten feet. That's perfect. Right. Stash the oars quietly. Let's get a couple of baits out. I don't use live baits, these uh, large live baits these days. I like small ones, and I just hook them once only with the, the one remaining barb on the hook through the top lip, just like that. So that's quite sufficient. I don't lose too many fish like it. And if I do, I don't really mind anyway. Right, let's put that out a good cast. And that will work around with the wind nicely. Right. I'm straight in that line. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. There's not too much of a, a wind blowing, but it's a, it's a bit nippy around the back of my head. I have something to eat as well. Well, I've got both baits out now. They've both worked all the way downwind. I hope I'm not going to get a grebe any minute because it's obviously after some small fish which are lying in the same area, so I would think there's some pike about. And every now and again he makes a bit of a dive. I think I've only ever had one bait grabbed by a grebe and the rod nearly flew out of the boat and the line whistled along as though it had been connected to a runaway lorry. Unfortunately, it dropped it. I thought I got a real big one. Well, the wind's getting up a bit now and gusting. That's good because that'll activate the baits a little bit more. Hello. I think I've got a run on that one right now. Just going to feel. Yeah, there he is. Right. I may be risking losing it, but I'm going to hit it straight away. Hard tie down and a strong strike, and there he is. He's there. Oh, a small one, I think, by the feel of it. Yeah, small fish. But it's a lovely bend in this rod. So I like using them. It's super. Makes you feel you've got a monster. I like to be realistic with my pike fishing. Most of the fish I get are small, so I might as well enjoy them. What's well, going down now? It's going around nicely. It's coming around the front. Oh. The worst thing with these light gear is you haven't got a lot of leeway to stop them going under the anchor, so I have to be fairly careful. Oh, come on, baby. There he is. Oh, it's a small fish. Right. I'm going to unhook him in the water because the treble's just in the scissors. It's not a big fish, so that... There's, there's no point in me bringing him in and weighing him unnecessarily. So I'll bring him to the side of the boat and hold the trace in my hands and then unhook him with the forceps. And just neatly put the treble out. If I'm very quiet in what I do, he might even shake himself off. No, he's not. Fish of about six pounds. If I just hold the treble gently, and there he is. Well, that was a nice fight from such a little fish. Right, I think it's worth putting another bait out there again. And... It's getting decidedly nippy now, this 
I think this wind's turned around a little bit. Oh. There's nothing wrong with the... A wee drum on a day like this. Actually, live baiting is probably one of the most exciting methods of piking because all the time the, the bait's down there vibrating, working, encouraging the pike to, to come along. It's perhaps not the most active in terms of real manipulation, spinning, wobbling, dead baiting, etc., are methods that you're continually working the reel, but there's some sort of aggression within it probably brings out the hunting instinct in man that we've all got. Anglers take it out on fish. People who don't go fishing and have no other interest perhaps take it out on old ladies. But there's an aggression within us that has to come out and, and I feel it's this hunting thing that's, that's in fishing that um, makes live baiting okay for me. Some people put it into a controversial part of their sport, but um, I don't look at it like that. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. I thought I'd just had a, a take on that one, but... Uh... Hello, I'm away again. Before I strike, I like to... I like to feel that clonk of it shaking its head when it might be turning the bait. This one's doing nothing. It's coming towards me slowly. Could be a paper bag. Let's wind down anyway. Yes, that's a good one. Away we go. It's a very, very slow take then. It's almost as though it caught on a piece of cabbage. Just move this other rod out of the way. About the same size today. Small. The fifth hook. Fish in the scissors, would you believe it? Goodness me, I can't remember a day when they were taking so delicately as today. It's most peculiar. Now, which one? This one is. Just inside the jaws, we put a glove on and unhook him. Now at this point, some people put their hands into the into the scissors underneath the jaw there, but I'm a little bit wary because if the hook's just inside, I'm liable to get caught up and I work with my hands. And they're more valuable to me than this pike, although I try to take as much care with this fish as, as I can. It's just inside the... There we are. And we've got some more. There's another leech. This time of the year when the fish spend a lot of time on the bottom when it's very cold, there's thousands of those leeches on them. They've got a sucker on either end. There we are. Let's pop him back to be a, become a bigger one, hopefully. Well, I've given live baiting a good old go now for several hours, and I'm going to have a go with dead baiting. I've got just made up a couple of rods, one with half an eel on, and I'm going to put that out, run right out of my way into the deeper water, and put the line in an elastic band so that I can see if I get a, a run. And with the other one, I'm going to cover the same area but I've worked with the live baits, but with a small dead roach. And with that, I've got four swan shots, keeping it down close to the bottom where the pike are, but so that I can retrieve it fairly fast. Retrieving slow sometimes brings a few follows, but they just don't want to take. Right, this is one of my standard two-hook dead baiting rigs. Two size eight trebles on the trace. 
and I'm going to use a half an eel. This is one of my favourite baits. They're a supernatural bait that not many anglers bother to collect during the summer months like I do and freeze down for use in the winter. And I put the trebles fairly well up the tray so that even if the pike does swallow a lot of it, you've still only got one treble at the back of the, the mouth. There we are. That's super. I've caught a lot of fish on this particular very effective natural bait. And that one's going right out of my way over there. And I'm going to tighten up to it, open the bail arm, and just clip the line in an elastic band. And whilst I'm working the other rod, I can keep looking at that loop. And when that goes, I'm in business. Right. Wobbling does tend to kink up traces. I'm going to have to make sure I keep checking this because one little kink in the braided elasticum will render it useless. Now, I've set the clutch here so that one sudden take won't break the line, but I can strike with a good chance of setting the hooks on impact. In this case, I don't wait for a run. I just simply keep twitching it. Now, I've got the... The swan shot's just in front of it, and I expect a, a take on this to come fairly close to the bottom, and I shall strike immediately. There's no chance in this instance of, of letting the pike run with it because they'll feel the swan shot. And what I try and do with the wobble dead bait is keep jarring the, the rod tip so that the bait goes up and down, and when I stop winding, the swan shot's plummet it down to the bottom, and then when I pull again, of course, up it comes. It's the most erratic, looks like a wounded fish to a pike, and sometimes you get the most savage takes. They really pull the rod. I'm going to go back to live baiting again. Quite a few casts with, with one trace. Every time the bait hits the water, the, the trace gets a little bit over stretch, and it's silly to keep a straight on, um, a cast on too long. There we are. Well, I'll just put this rod together again, and I think we'll move them right over to the middle of the hole and stay with the wind, but move about 20, 30 yards, perhaps downwind. Well, I've only been in this new spot about three minutes, and one of the live baits is already away. It was a wise move switching back from dead baiting. Here we go. And he's on. Yep. <sighs> it's keeping deep and it's going upwind. Feels a marginally better fish on there. You never can tell. It's keeping quite deep. Putting a good bend in the rod. Sometimes it's only a... Yes, it isn't, it isn't that big. There it comes. It was better than the other little ones, though. Oh, yes. Come on, baby. It's about 12, 13 pounds. Ah, oh, got him. Oh, dear me. Nearly did a swimmer's roll out of the net. And I think it's only just hooked anyway. Oh, that's a nice looking fish. Right. Have a quick check of the other rod before I do anything else. Yeah, that's all right. I'll leave that bat on open. Right. Rather handy if I could unhook him in the net without. No, oh, it's actually spat the hook out in the net. Would you believe it? That saved us a lot of trouble. They are very lightly hooked, these fish, today. I think that's why I've pulled out the three or four. I don't know why. Perhaps it's the sudden chill of this wind that makes them a little bit finicky. I don't know. Let's have a look at him. Oh, that's a nice-looking fish. It's quite deep. <sighs> Oh, that's a lovely looking fish. Cool. Fat as butter. Look at him. Oh, it's a nice young fish. 
female by the look of her. This is where it's wise to keep this foam on the bottom so they don't knock themselves on, on the bottom of the boat. Oh, dear me. There she is. Oh. It's a nice looking fish. That's a nice end to the day. Probably about 12, 13 pounds. Lovely looking fat female. There you go. Oh. Soak me. Oh. Absolute magic. <laughs>